Hi, uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, standard deviation. And um, standard deviation is something you can do with, um, you know, a sample of data with numerical measurements. And uh, let's say we have a bunch of the, a, a certain species of plant that has a huge variation in height. And we want to find out what the measure of spread is of this data. Well, first of all, we need to, um, well, one of the things we need to do is we need to uh, realize that um, standard deviation, hold on, Standard deviation is a way of measuring spread, and um, it, it measures how spread the data is with the mean being somewhere in the middle. And uh, basically, we can take the standard deviation as the variable s, and this would be equal to a fraction. So if we look at, uh, take a look at getting a fraction going on here. All right. This is equal to um, basically, let's see, the sum, uh, hold on, I'm going to say that this is, uh, before we do the standard deviation, we should actually do the variance, because that's actually precludes that, and so, or precedes it, and so the variance is actually symbolized as s squared. And that's because the standard deviation is actually the square root of the variance. So let's take a look at how we would find, well, hold on, how we would find that. So we have really x sub i subtract x bar, right? And that's squared. Now, this, I said that this is x bar, so we need to put a bar over this. So let's look at all the accents we could use here. This takes a while to populate, so I gotta, here we go. Okay, xi minus x bar over n minus one. Now this is actually, actually, hold on. When we divide by n, this is called the population variance. There's also um, the other kind of variance, which is just um, sample sample variance and the only difference uh, the population variance for one thing has a different symbol it's not s squared it's s actually sigma squared which means i got to eliminate this and i got to go into the equation editor give me a second <coughs> and um let's see the letter sigma where do we get that that's this it's the lowercase sigma not the uppercase and it's sigma squared. Okay, so that's the population variance. The sample variance, they don't use Greek letters, they use just normal normal alphabet letters, um, your European alphabet, and uh, the sample variance is actually um, the same thing. The only thing is um, the population mean has a different symbol. The population mean, hold on, I'm gonna have to eliminate this. The population mean is another Greek letter and that's the letter mu. So I just gotta look for the letter mu. There it is. Okay, xi minus mu. Xi is just the ith data in in a sample of data. Okay, so that basically we're taking uh, the sum. You know what? This is not this is not right either. I gotta I gotta do this again. So the equation is, it's actually the sum of the squares. It's not just the square of one thing. So where's my sigma? Oh boy. Here, let's just put this in. Um, where's my sigma? Large operator is what we want, and we only need this. So this is going to be the sum of uh, x uh, sub i minus, I think I can say mu, and that'll give me the Greek letter, and then I can square that. And that's over uh, n. Now, 
mu and bar x are not the not necessarily the same in fact they're very frequently not the same at all um, what you get from a sample mean is the mean of a sample not the mean of the population the population will have a very different mean from the sample so it has a different symbol and it's probably actually a different number quite often the sample the population mean is something that would be very hard to find especially if the population is very large so most people rely just on the sample mean so the only thing is because the sample mean is not entirely a hundred percent accurate what we do is that we recognize that the numerator of the sample variance tends to overestimate um, or tends to underestimate I'm sorry the true population variance because that's really what it is the sample variance is supposed to be an estimator for the population just in case it's not possible to take the population so as a correction factor or a fudge factor they use n minus 1 as a sample variance okay so that's the sample variance s squared now the pop now we need to also have something else population standard deviation which is equal to well really the simple way to express this is to the, say the square root of s squared now I don't know why the square root is behaving funny on me uh, hold on a second let's yeah there we go this s squared actually belongs in here okay so the square root of s squared which is really nothing more than s right and so this is equal to the square root of this whole expression so you take this whole expression here and put it under a square root so we go sqrt and then and then place that whole expression under there and that's the population standard deviation but hold on a minute that's not I didn't mean for that to be s that meant to be uh, sigma lowercase sigma and uh, all right I guess for consistency this is also Sigma oh no that's Delta isn't it that's lowercase Delta I need lowercase Sigma so this is Sigma okay I think that's it okay good so the population standard deviation is that now what about the sample standard deviation well um, we can say this I'll we'll just put this over here and this is the square root of s squared let's just uh, go to the equation editor and enter a radical I think this will work yes and I I'm hoping crossing my fingers this will work taking quite li quite a lot of liberties here here we go so this is good so th these are four new formulas that we're going to be introducing uh, for population variance population standard deviation sample variance sample standard deviation these formulas you don't have to memorize they're all in your book and since our course is project based you're looking at the wrong page here since this course is project based um, you can feel free to make use of these two pages which are in the back they're inside the back cover of your textbook okay so now um, all right let's move over to over here oh sorry that's the wrong thing I wanted to use this okay so we need to look at what we need to do here oh first of all I made the same mistake as over here I need to take a Sigma so this has to be looks like I keep doing this okay that's what that's supposed to be and of course by extension uh, give me a second Uh, we got to do the same here now what do these capital sigmas mean the sigma in front of the x xi minus x bar it just means the sum of the difference 
between the ith data point and bar x. So you take these, you take these things, and we're going to do it right here. So first of all, we need to find out what bar x is. But here we're just do x i the ith thing minus uh, x bar, which I'll just call the mean. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we got to find out what the mean is. The first thing you do is find the sum of this whole column of numbers. So you take this column of numbers, these plant heights in centimeters, and then close your bracket, and it's 1954. How, ma how many data are there? Um, so if you're lazy, or if you just like counting, or if you just like typing, uh, just count if the same uh, range of data, and it says NA. Not available. What's the deal? A4 to A23. Why is that? Why is that an A? Oh, um, count A. Count A is what, or count, or just count. Count is what I want. And it's 20 data. So this is the sum. This is N. And this is the mean. The mean will be 1,954 divided by 20. So equals this number divided by this number. And so the mean is 97.7. We're going to be using this number and subtracting it from every one of these numbers one at a time and then finding the sum of that column. So then we go here, we go equal sign xi minus x bar. Now, uh, because A27 is a fixed cell, I am going to have to hit F4 and make sure that that, uh, that that is fixed because I'm about to get really lazy and just do this. Okay. Well, yeah, it's rather unfortunate, rather unfortunate that I have this here like that. I'm going to move that column one over only because uh, when I take the sum, it'll interfere with these labels and I don't want it to interfere. Now notice that these deviations, some of them are negative and some of them are positive. Now when finding the standard deviation, why not just take the sum of the deviations? Because the standard deviation is really recognized as just being the average deviation of your sample. The average deviation. So, gee, duh, why don't we just take the sum of this column and find the average? Why resort to this, these funky formulas that we have here. Why Why go to those? There's a reason. I'm going to show you something. Let's take the sum of that column. Okay? Sum. I'm going to show you something. Here, look. I think this will convince you. Look, the sum is zero. So when you divide zero by 20, what do you think the average deviation of zero divided by 20? Yeah, it's zero, right? So we're saying that the average number has no deviations whatsoever? Or that none of the numbers deviate? I mean, duh, look at these numbers. They're all over the all over the place. There's no way this is right. No way. But that's like common sense. That's like the common sense answer. Why would you know? And it's because the reason it's zero or some number extremely close to zero is because half of the deviations are above the mean and half of the deviations are below the mean. This is true of all distributions. When you add up these deviations, you are going to get zero or a number extremely super duper close. Okay? That's why nobody does it that way. <laughs> so now what we got to do is we got to make a new column. So we don't take the sum of this column because we know it'll get us nowhere. So we got to, we got to actually uh, square this. So xi minus the mean uh, squared. So we're going to square this thing. And uh, OK. All right. That, all that means is I'm taking this number and I'm squaring it and I'm putting the value here. That's all we're doing. OK. So equal sign this squared. OK. There we go. These are going to be big numbers. But you can see when we square a number, the minus sign goes away. Now I hear you asking, why are we going this convoluted way of finding the sum of the squares? Why don't we just take the absolute value and average that? 
hey, this is the way it's done. This is the practice. There is another kind of standard deviation that does use absolute value, but it's, it's got a completely different name and it's used only for very specialized purposes. So in a way, that is a kind of that is a kind of standard deviation. It is, it's a certain kind, but its uses are very limited and you hardly hear about it. The standard deviation we all use in science and in mathematics, widely used in just about every field of research is the one I'm teaching you. So if we take the sum of all these, or basically take the square of all these numbers in this column, we get all the numbers in this column. Well, now we can sum that. And once again, I'm going to get lazy. I'm too lazy to type sum, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, by the way, just to prove to you that this works, notice I got sum of the cell range D4 to D23, and this, in fact, is cell D4, and it ends on cell D23. So this is the correct sum of the correct numbers, and we did expect the numbers to be big, and it is big, 39,814. That's pretty large. So this is the sum of the squares. I'll just call it SS, sum of the squares. N is still 20. So the next is the variance. You know what? How about if we do this? Yeah, okay. That's the sum of the squares or the sum of that column. Uh, the variance, we can go into that right away. And all this, all this is, is this number divided by this number. Well, this number minus one because this is a sample, right? By the way, a lot of this, you might, you might actually be concerned that you're going to have to know the difference between the sample and the population to be able to pick the right, to be able to pick the right formula. Most questions you are using, you are using the uh, sample, most questions. You know, there was one question that I gave on a test. That uh, was the box office gross uh, amounts of the 10 the top 10 best-selling movies of all time in the theater. Um, top 10. So, now was that top 10 a sample or is that considered a population? This is tricky. Ask yourself this. What other top 10 movies would, be, would there be for the same year? Right. There are no other top 10 movies. That is the population. <laughs> a population of 10. Okay? But in, in, in a lot of cases, you know, you got, in, in, in my case, I got plants, you know? So clearly there are more than 20 plants on the planet, you know? So this is clearly a, clearly a sample. Now when we take the variance, we are doing this. We're taking this number and dividing by because it's, a, because it's a sample, this number, subtract 1, and there you go. There's our variance. The standard deviation uh, is, actually, um, is actually the square root of this number. So we just click on that, close our bracket, and the standard deviation is 45.77. Now there is a formula, there's a quick and dirty formula that does that from uh, Excel, STDEV. You can do that right away, except that you have to specify your entire cell range and then, um, okay, that, that, do, that dog don't hunt. How, oh, I'm, okay. I got to do the standard deviation of the original data. I can't, that's the standard deviation of the square of my numbers. But as you can see here, the standard deviation from Excel formula and the standard deviation, by the way, I just went in my roundabout way, um, is is uh, identical. Now, uh, if the data size was smaller, let's say if it was like 10 or 12 or 15 or so, in fact, you can actually do this by hand. You can do this yourself by hand, right? Now you know, you just got to find the mean, and then you take away the mean from each of the data and get this. You square the numbers and you get this, and then you add them to get this. Then you divide by n minus one, and then you take the square root. It's really not that big a deal. Just a reminder, um, there are other 
uh, other forms of uh, spread measure standard deviation is one measure of spread it's one of the most popular there are also others which we took up in a previous video those were the range right the range of the data that's definitely a measure of spread the um, the interquartile range that's another measure of spread as well as the semi interquartile range these are all measures of spread along with the standard deviation of which now we have the population standard deviation and we have the sample standard deviation please choose wisely and I think that'll be it for this video um, I do have a second video of which I do list the homework exercises I'll list them here doesn't matter uh, section 2.6 page 148 to 149 numbers 1 through 9 12 and 14 have a good evening